The long, discouraging vigil of Coy Burks, which began at 7.15 this morning, is over. It ended amidst gathering crowds of relatives, friends, sympathizers, and onlookers at 1.20 this afternoon when rescue officials pulled to the surface the car containing the body of 59-year-old Mrs. Viola Burks of 4301 Von Seal. Mrs. Burks, a registered nurse, was making her way home from work through the driving rain when torrential waters swept across the 5200 block of Walthall Street in Haltom City and carried the nurse and her car 10 to 20 yards down Little Fossil Creek. The auto sank from sight under the swollen water and wasn't seen again until afternoon when the creek began to recede. As the car is towed from the silty depths, the body of Mrs. Burks can be seen inside and the last vestiges of hope maintained by Mr. Burke have faded into a long vacuum of despair. Bob Gooding from the banks of Little Fossil Creek for Channel 8 News. But the violence of rioting and its concomitants of looting and of malicious burning must never be treated as a substitute for the taking of lawful steps to correct local grievances. In discussing and considering riots, we must begin with the premise that rioting is a crime, that it is lawless conduct.
Nice day for it, sitting in a park this first day of spring, isn't it? Well, let's face it, it wasn't all roses. As a matter of fact, by 9 o'clock this morning, the Trinity River at Dallas had blossomed to within a few feet of its crest of 30 feet. As the waters rose around town, so rose the risk of getting caught right in the middle of it. Just ask truck driver Joe Blassingame. He and several friends were trying to evacuate three to four families near the Forest Lane Bridge in northwest Dallas. Blassingame's truck engine got too wet to work, and before it was all over with, fire department rescue units had evacuated Joe by a rope from the swift currents. Old Faithful, better known as White Rock Spillway, took credit for closing a number of roads in that area. All told, the Dallas metropolitan area saw some two dozen streets closed or badly flooded. Out in Grand Prairie, barricades went up in a number of low-lying areas, but some people just don't trust signs. Fortunately, no one was injured when this car was driven to a halt at Highway 80 and Jefferson Road. And if it were up to those windshield wipers, the car would have probably made it. Also on Jefferson Street, west, the spillway water from rain-swollen Mountain Creek Lake threatened to shut off traffic there, but never did. Deeper into Grand Prairie, in the fashionable Wildwood Oak section, a half dozen homes were gutted when an adjacent creek had all the water it could drink. Jim Logan and his family on Ivanhoe Circle were hardest hit here, as two feet of muddy water forced them to higher ground. Son Patrick Logan surveyed the home by canoe, but was unable to do much about the whole mess. In Dallas today, there were no deaths or serious injuries directly attributable to the flooding. But in Fort Worth, the story was different. Bob Gooding has that. A member of the President's Crime Commission was keynote speaker today in dedication ceremonies of the Police Academy of the North Central Texas Council of Governments. Houston Attorney Leon Jaworski spoke to representative of the Council's 10-county membership. He said that lawlessness is a cancerously dangerous attitude to our system of government. If the civil rights leader, for example, in good conscience disobeys a law or a court decree because it offends his moral belief, of what is right, then why should not his antagonist also be free to exercise this prerogative? And if both protagonist and antagonist on this issue are to be excused from obedience of laws on conscientious grounds, why should not the exemption extend, if you want to take an extreme example, for instance, to the La Cosa Nostra, which has its own body of law and justice? which their members believe to be superior to the laws of our nation. This line of reasoning can be extended ad infinitum. In discussing riots, the Houston attorney said all riots, regardless of purpose, are unlawful and the participants are violators. A brief ribbon-cutting session featured a man called synonymous with law enforcement, U.S. Marshal J.R. Red Wright. The first 40-member class begins Monday for basic recruit specialized in in-service training for local police and sheriff's departments. A tour of facilities followed for a view of classrooms. Training will range from firearm handling to crime investigation and disaster and riot control work. This is Harvey Johnston in Arlington for Channel 8 News.